Oh, so I thought that we would talk about something a little bit different, like a fictional character. <laughs> One of my favorite fictional characters is Indiana Jones. I thought it's fitting because of Indiana Jones 5 in production, which, you know, to be quite honest, I don't think there needs to be an Indiana Jones 5. <laughs> Yeah, especially when Indiana Jones 4 was not that great. And and I'll tell you why. Okay. I watched Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. I put off watching it because to be honest, I didn't think that Indy 4 needed to happen. And finally I went ahead and I watched it. A couple of friends told me it's really not that bad. And my family told me, just go ahead and watch it. So I sat down and I watched it and I'm just like, what is this? <laughs> what, what, oh my gosh. First of all, they did not use, <laughs> Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis. Why? Look, I, I, I love Karen Allen. I have seen her in other things. She's a very talented actress. But like the whole point of Indiana Jones was that he was supposed to be like this James Bond type of character. He was this adventurous womanizer type so there was always going to be a different woman but they brought back Karen Allen <laughs> it defeated the whole purpose I I don't I don't understand why they did that <laughs> please explain because <laughs> I'm having problems here I'm not the only fan of Indiana Jones that does not understand this because Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis was so perfect. I mean, I mean, the whole idea of him and Sophia working at this Jastro expedition, and you still have the that supernatural effect. I mean, like the the alien thing totally threw me off. I was like, what is this? What is going on? I, <laughs> I, I really, really did not understand where they're, and, and at one point, the, the plot just, I got lost. I felt like it just went in entire, an entirely different direction. So, I mean, but with Fate of Atlantis, Oh, it would have been so great to see Sophia have it. They could have even used Infernal Machine. But they didn't. <laughs> I'm so frustrated. Why are they using, why are they doing Indiana Jones 5? That doesn't make any sense at all. So this is why I have a problem <laughs> with... Oh, good heavens, yes. But um, the thing about Indiana Jones, oh, I love Indiana Jones, I, you know, and I remember as a kid, the first time I saw, I was six years old, and my grandmother had bought the VHS. It was New Year's Eve. And of course, the, the adults weren't really paying attention. And the thing about little kids is, well, especially with the whole VHS thing, is you would push it into the VHS and it would make this loud sound, some of the first ones. <laughs> and and the, the flap of the, the uh, VHS player would come down really hard and be like, blah. <laughs> and so, and for little kids are like, movie time. <laughs> <laughs> so all of a sudden we were in in the living room we got to you know my my grandma had this uh little room 
and it was pretty much the kid room. And I remember she had these like little bean bags and we would hang out there. There was a bookshelf and it was, it was a pretty small room. And there was like this little TV and all it had on it was like one of those old Atari games. <laughs> and it was one of those Atari games that this guy would uh grab on he would like jump he was on one side on a ledge and then he would you had to grab the ropes and if you didn't grab the rope i i just remember it would go bump. <laughs> we played that a lot that was one of our we would actually fight over who got to play first and but anyway once once we heard the uh player we we came in and the thing about the Indiana Jones VHS is that it had the commercial on it. There was this commercial for Diet Coke and this couple uh, was sitting in their living room and he decided he needed to go into the kitchen and get something to drink. And of course he opens the fridge and then the floor splits, everything's shaking and everything. She's oblivious to everything that's going on. And <laughs> the coke falls out of the the uh the refrigerator and then all of a sudden you see this whip whip around the diet <laughs> i wonder if that's on uh anywhere in on youtube i'll find it and i'll put it in the description box because you know as little kids we thought that was so cool but you know I, i'm sure the adults were like oh geez you know big old eye roll <laughs> <laughs> oh man and you know as a little kid i thought indiana jones was just he was so handsome <laughs> but the thing is in my little kid brain i couldn't separate you know like harrison ford i didn't understand this as Harrison Ford as an actor, I didn't understand that. It, you know, it was still like the whole fantasy aspect to it. So I saw Indiana Jones first, and then I saw Return of the Jedi. And so when they're calling him Han Solo, I just, I had a real problem with that. I'm like, no, he's Indiana Jones. <laughs> what are you doing? and and everything is he in disguise what does he do what's happening my parents tried so hard to explain it to me and it's like he is harrison ford he's he's <laughs> i remember finally my mom got so frustrated she was like he's playing dress up harrison ford is playing dress up he was playing dress up and he was playing in the oh well he <laughs> i remember saying well he he's intense when he plays dress up <laughs> It made my mom laugh, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, good heavens. Yeah, I, I was a dumb kid. <laughs> oh, good heavens. Now, Indiana Jones is based off of an actual person, if I remember correctly. I have it up here real quick and let's see if I can find it here uh, da, 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 characters uh, no, da, 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 da. toy line okay I think I went past it um well because the thing about indiana jones and his background you know like who he is inspired from is george lucas changes his stories all the time he, he does it with star wars with a lot of you know well this is inspired by this this is inspired by that this is i i decided to do this and and he's always caught and he tries to do a runaround and it's like no no, 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 no. You said this. We have the video of it. <laughs> and he just kind of, you know, brushes it off and everything. And okay, this is what I want. And 
Let's see. Let's see if we can find. That's what I want. Okay. So when it comes to inspirations, now that we're finally there, <laughs> uh, he has said that it goes with like Doc Savage. I've read a few of the Doc Savage. I used to have some, but I got rid of them. And it was also like the King Solomon's Mines and uh, which is interesting considering that's featured in infernal machine so and and this is both um lucas and spielberg saying this and then um yeah it says uh, like a james bond type of film so and and they had sean connery of course as uh henry jones and uh, rest in peace and which is you know the thing about sean connery which i'll talk later is he actually said that he would come out of retirement if he was given the role of henry jones senior he loved playing that part and he was so good at it too and uh, they also say uh, Professor Challenger, which he, that was a uh, Conan Doyle's character in uh, The Lost World. And uh, I mean, they have a whole bunch of different characters. Uh, another influence was uh, Scrooge McDuck. And uh, that was, <laughs> I don't understand how Scrooge McDuck would be an influence. Another important influence on the development of the character is Scrooge McDuck. How though? Oh, I guess because of the, the adventures. Yeah, and then of course with the uh, DuckTales, I guess that makes sense. Because I, I, I was looking at this uh, in the 47, uh, comic book but now nah, with the ducktales that makes more sense and uh, that the ducktales well now wait a minute raiders came first because raiders was in 1981 <laughs> oh good heavens uh, this appreciation of Scrooge as an adventurer influenced the development of Jones with the prologue of Raiders of the Lost Ark containing homage to in Scrooge's adventure of Seven Cities of Cibola. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, published in Uncle Scrooge number seven from September of 1954. Uh, this homage in the film takes the form of playfully mimicking the removal of the statuette from its pedestal and the falling stone sequence of the comic book. That's interesting. I didn't know that. Okay. Well, now I learned something. <laughs> so yeah, they had, and there was actually an, an actual, uh, an adventurer. And oh uh, yeah, historical models. Here we go. We're learning a whole bunch of people. Uh, many are said to be real life inspirations. Now these are ones that Lucas and Spielberg haven't really said. Um, but people have decided, but there was one that I thought actually was. So like uh, Carl Ethan Accolade, uh, there was Edgar James Banks, uh, <laughs> a circus strong man, I don't think so. Uh, Robert Braidwood, I guess that would be like a Ravenwood. And uh, anyway, I'll put all this in the description box because <laughs> I'm not going to go through the whole thing. I think I've prolonged this enough. I mean, uh, 
wasted enough time in any way. But um, so there were a lot of uh, inspirations. Some people have put in their idea of of uh, who could be inspired as well. I've come across a few and people have told me their ideas and everything else. I mean, it, it's interesting to, to, you know, figure out the, the Scrooge one was new to me. I, I really did not know that. Um, but again, I will put, I know about the, uh, the dog, Indiana. <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone knows about the dog, but um, the one thing that I was seeing a lot about oh, four or five years ago now were these archaeologists who would watch Indiana Jones, you know, the, the whole watch for the first time. I, <laughs> I take that with a grain of salt, you know, but there were these archaeologists, Egyptologists, and they would watch Indiana Jones or Raiders of the Lost Ark, either one, you know, whichever one it is. And like their biggest complaint is how terrible he is. At, you know, they they like have massive freakouts over how terrible he is at his job and everything. And it's like, we know <laughs> that's 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 one of the funny things about Indiana Jones is that he's not really good at being an archaeologist. <laughs> <laughs> he really isn't. <laughs> That's why his dad is so pissed at him all the time. <laughs> but one thing to understand about Indiana Jones is that this was made at a time when a lot of hero movies you know, you think about like out of the 70s where there was like movies like Clash of the Titans and everything. And even in, even after Raiders of the Lost Ark was made in, in uh, 81, you have a lot of these movies made where the hero is a teenager or in their 20s. You have this guy who is in his 30s and he's pushing 40. It, to be quite honest, that, that was refreshing. <laughs> and, um, and it worked. You know, it just the idea, he, he's, he's a handsome guy. And, and he knows it, <laughs> he's, he's an arrogant guy. And he, he passes off, when, when you're introduced to him, he, he knows several languages. He seems to know his profession, you know, all these different cultures and all this stuff. But as you get to know him, you realize he's really not. <laughs> he, he's a big flirt and, and and all of that and and he's but he's good at fighting and <laughs> and but he the the thing about indiana is that he respects the cultures the different cultures and everything well to a point i guess and and the reason i say that is sorry i just hit the mic and um the reason i say that is <laughs> You know, in grade school, I just thought Indiana Jones was so perfect. And I mean, again, good looking guy, no getting around that. But I remember in high school, we had uh, these marathons. And my, my friends and I, we would get together on the weekends, we'd grab a pizza and, and, and we'd have these marathons and, and we'd watch. Uh, well, we'd only watch two of them. We weren't really interested in the in uh, Temple of Doom. Very rarely did we watch Temple of Doom, but anyway, we would watch these movies. And and the thing that really stuck with us, by that time, by the time you're a, a teenager, you suddenly realize when Belloc says, if only who spoke Hovitos. And when he says that, you suddenly realize, wait a minute, here's a guy that he's supposed to be well-educated and he knows 
everything. He he comes to this country and he doesn't. <laughs> he, he was able to get through all the booby traps. He knew all of that. But he doesn't speak Hovitos. He he couldn't do that. <laughs> He couldn't be one step ahead in that sense. Okay. And uh, I remember one time doing one of these marathons and watching uh, The Last Crusade and that part where they find the knight's tomb. And one of my friends was, oh, she was having such fits over this. And she's like, that's how they, I mean, he, first of all, they get through the, the catacombs and everything and he's like breaking things right and left and all this stuff you know it's like every time he touches something it crumbles and all of this and i understand it's an old place but at the same time he should be more <laughs> and and then the only way to uh his first thought is to just completely destroy that that tomb and i remember her she's just like oh my gosh i can't believe he did that. so that's that's why i say that and then you think about in um the different times in fate of atlantis where he just destroys things <laughs> like when he takes the rib cage oh my gosh like, well he won't be needing it <laughs> andy no that's not good <laughs> <laughs> so i mean we we know this about the character we know he's not a good archaeologist he's <laughs> his, his dad is frustrated with him about that's the greatest thing about uh, uh we in um last crusade too uh just watching his dad be so done with him half the time <laughs> Oh, and Sean Connery played that part so well. Again, rest in peace, sir. But um, I kind of wish, uh, again, that would have been a, a better uh, movie is Fate of Atlantis. You could have replaced one of the characters. I know, heaven forbid. I mean, even have like, instead of Philippe Costa, in the Azores, you could have had them go to his dad and, um, and you know, for the lost dialogue of Plato, maybe his, his dad knows where it is or something and have that. That would have been so, yeah, it would have, that would have been great. <laughs> and why not do that? And, uh, they didn't do it. <laughs> Oh, I'm so frustrated. I don't, I do know <laughs> as, well, as my dyslexia decides to try to do a thing that there's uh, novels. I have the novels, but I guess that after the fourth book, uh, there were a bunch of novels written. I was in the collection shop and I was looking at him and somebody said, don't even bother. These aren't even like fan fiction <laughs> worth being called fan fiction. I was like, they really can't be that bad. And he's like, oh, yes, they can. He's like, just stick to the old ones. There were like three authors. And there was one author that, I mean, like his work was okay, but the other two authors were a lot better. You know, I'm not saying that that one author was horrible like his writing was like i i can't read it no i i still enjoyed it but um the other two were a lot more solid and yeah so but to to be told that the novels after the fourth uh movie were not worth reading is <laughs> okay <laughs> now you know one thing that i've always wondered is why george lucas never made 
a cartoon series for Indiana Jones. I know that there's a, a, a fan made uh, cartoon series intro, which is really cool. I'll look for it and put it in the description box. Uh, the, the person who did it did a really good job. <laughs> the, the animation is fantastic. And all the little um, references and everything to all the movies is is great so um i'll find that and put that in the description box if you've never seen it it's well worth the watch and but so it, it it's a, i i'm really confused why lucas never made a cartoon series because after star wars was over i mean he was just pumping out all sorts of stuff <laughs> like the the ewok movies there were the two cartoon series, uh, Droid and Ewok. And so I would think, I don't know, maybe it's because Spielberg was behind this as well. And he said, Pull, no, we're not going to do that. <laughs> I mean, there was a lot of comic books and, and there were a lot of other merchandising. There just wasn't a cartoon series. I don't, I don't know. And then, of course, we get the uh, the video games, Fate of Atlantis. I've talked about that several times over on this on this channel. <laughs> I love the game. I can't help it. And and then, of course, Infernal Machine and, and those others. I think Fate of Atlantis is the better one. <laughs> And of course, Fate of Atlantis introduced at the very end when you finish the game and everything, it, it does introduce the young Indiana Jones Chronicles, which I, I, I did see, by the way, that Amazon has Indiana Jones Chronicles. So if you've never seen them, it's on Amazon now. And so I highly recommend you go and and watch the series because it's worth it. Yeah, it has a, f a couple episodes that are <laughs> a little questionable in the sense that it's like, wh what's going on? <laughs> like, um, there's an episode that's uh, this like Dracula episode. <laughs> I think they were between writers at that point and they were just kind of desperate to figure out what to do there because for the most part it stayed within the history and um, I mean you're not getting a history lesson at all it's just Indiana Jones uh, young Indy is there when little events are happening within history but <laughs> this one was just weird <laughs> and like i said there was a there were a couple others and and all that and um yeah it has a uh, sean patrick flannery there have been people that said that it uh focused way too long on uh world war one I. I think that's the point i mean you consider how long world war one lasted <laughs> And uh, what, what was the, the young man's name? Let me check here real quick. The one downside, I hope that on Amazon, the episodes are introduced by this old indie, this old Indiana Jones. And because uh, my DVD set doesn't have old Indy Jones. I remember watching the episodes when I was a little kid and every episode was introduced by this old man <laughs> and it was old Indy Jones. And um, so, yeah, let's see real quick. What is, because uh, Sean Patrick Flannery played uh, like a teenage Indiana Jones. George Hall was old Indy. Corey Carrier was uh, a very young Indy Jones. Um, 
like an eight-year-old Indiana Jones. And, but yeah, I, and there are a lot of big names that showed up in like Terry Jones. He was in, oh, I love that episode so much. <laughs> and I don't remember if he wrote the episode or directed it, but he did have a hand in it as well as starred in it because <laughs> I think that's the Russian, yeah, that is, that's the Russian ballet episode. And uh, <laughs> Indy Jones ends up in the Russian ballet and it is so freaking hilarious. It, is, it just makes me laugh so much. <laughs> oh man, that was funny. Uh, Sir Christopher Lee is in an episode. And uh, Daniel Craig is in an episode. Catherine Zeta-Jones is in an episode. Um, I mean, the list goes on. There's a lot of people in this that you don't expect to show up, and they do. So um, well worth watching uh, at least once. And there's also a couple episodes that Carrie Fisher uh, wrote. So. Um, so there's that. I don't remember which one, so I never remember. There's also an episode that Harrison Ford uh, appears in. It, it's a flashback episode, and he has a beard. It turns out that he was also filming The Fugitive at the time. I just learned that. So <laughs> I figured that he grew the beard for the flashback sequence, but no, that's... Um, but now the gentleman that played his dad, I thought did a really good job. You know, that, that's a that's a tough one because of course you have uh, Sir Sean Connery. How are you going to find a young version of, <laughs> of that? When everybody knows what Sean Connery looks like as a young man. Well, I think that they did a really good job. Um, uh, let's see, the gentleman who played is a, his name is Lloyd Owen. And, you know, the thing about Indiana Jones that you see in the movies where he's like this, the way that he acts and everything and then the, the relationship between he and his dad it's explained more in the series in the young indiana jones chronicles because especially when he's a, a little boy you see where his dad is kind of um distant from his son where because of the fact that he's a professor and he seems more interested in 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 that he had a chance to travel around the world so they're traveling and he needs to do his job he and and the the son they hired a, a nanny i think she was a, a nanny i really like her character she and um so then, of course, we know that uh, Mrs. Jones passes away, and it's like he still has a hard time connecting to his son. I think the toughest episode was when Indiana Jones comes home from the war. Now, he had been kidnapped, and that's how he ended up in this whole web of ending up in the war and everything else so, you know you would think that his dad would be absolutely ecstatic to see his son but it's like he he's just acting like his his son had rebelled been out past curfew or something and now he's back and now he has to go back to work or something. It, it was just so bizarre. And so there's like this, whole, it was a really tough episode. And um, 
it's it still gets me upset. I I I watch. I've been watching this for a long time. I mean, the the DVD set came out like in two thousand five. I think sounds about right. And I I sat down and I binge watched the whole thing. I was so excited because I hadn't seen this series in so long. And I sat down and I watched it. And I remember watching that episode and I was so heated. Of, oh my gosh. And I, I sat down on MySpace and I was like, who else has this set that I can talk to you about it? <laughs> but um, no, the casting is great. Um, so if you haven't seen it, it is up on Amazon. I did see that. And um but the the young indie chronicles, uh, like I said, Sean Patrick Flannery plays the oldest. I do want to emphasize we do need to remember River Phoenix because he played the uh played young indie in the movie. Now uh George Lucas did ask him to play young indie in the TV series, but he said no seems like he was doing a movie at the time so yeah he was given the chance to, to play the character again and and it didn't happen so but yeah um i i do want to uh remember river phoenix and because <laughs> he did play and you know that that's the other thing is for uh indiana jones and the last crusade you had uh river phoenix who who played young indy jones and then when it goes over to i i love the transition by the way with the hat i've always loved that <laughs> that transition and um after the guy says you lost a day kid that doesn't mean you have to like it and they put the hat on and then it's adult indy and then you have the relationship between uh, uh, Sean Connery and Harrison Ford. And it, it's one of, <laughs> I, I love it. I absolutely love it. And uh, I mean, <laughs> Now, I did mention the the books. I have I have those books. And <laughs> the interesting thing, you know, that that's another thing that really bugs me about Indiana Jones 4 is <laughs> because in the books Indiana does get married. And he has a wife named uh, Deirdre and what's so funny about because because again you you know you have these egyptologists and and archaeologists who who uh flip out over indiana jones and again we know <laughs> we all know but the funny thing is is that he's portrayed as this uh womanizer you know he knows he's he's hot stuff and everything and but in the books he he has like this whirlwind romance and he he does get married and i kind of wish that they had touched on that why didn't they do that <laughs> i like the books uh there was one oh my gosh it is so trippy and i don't remember if it's i think it is peru it it, it, it is so weird the way that it is written and it, but it's written really well because it's like uh indy is on this bridge and and like all of a sudden he's in a hut 10 days later and there's like so much psychological weird stuff going on and and uh it's <laughs> i i had to put the book down several times because it, it was just messing with me man and because like indy would start talking about stuff and 
you know that part in Temple of Doom where he's lying on that slab and he's like kicking the candles and everything where he's like getting all kinds of possessed and everything yeah it's along those lines is you know where it's just like this is like creepy man this is way too weird and uh, but that was the whole point of the story was that something bad was happening in this village and it needed to be fixed and that's what indy was there for and yeah and one of my favorites i've read this one so many times it's called secret of the sphinx <laughs> i i love this story i i really do and and in the book it's been a while since i've read it but in it there's a mother and her daughter and they are trying to find her husband and it, the the daughter's dad and the thing is that they are scam artists now she's like this dancers fortune teller type thing and uh, we all know that indiana jones isn't very open-minded he's not into all this religion nonsense you know it's like even though he's he's pretty much an atheist kind of thing yeah kind of a deal and all that even with all the things that he's seen he just it's out the window with him but um <laughs> Yeah, he, he's the most closed-minded person you're ever going to see. Well, the, the funny thing is about this book is that he's helping this woman find her husband. It's, he's a, a pilot, and his ship, his, uh, not a ship, his, his airplane went down, and she's sure that he's still alive, and she's going to try and find him. And there are so many times where Indy's like, how did I get recruited for this? <laughs> Why am I here and everything? But the thing about Indy, of course, is that the flirtation kicks in and he's he's trying. Well, then the girl, the, the daughter gets in the way. She's like a preteen. She's like 11, 12 years old. And she messes with Indy. I mean, she... Indy's not one for kids, you know, he, he, he's not a big fan of kids and uh, never wants to know why. I mean, like with short round, of course, but <laughs> how can you hate short round? He's, he's adorable. <laughs> but, but, oh my gosh, this kid is 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 annoying because of course he wants some alone time with this gal even though she's running a scam <laughs> they are pickpockets and you know she she taught her own daughter to pick pockets of her client you know of the you know as she's doing her thing as she's dancing and doing her thing and everything well indy stopped her one time and she <laughs> she didn't like that and she tried to get him in trouble that didn't work and i mean it, it's so funny to watch i mean to read about the the relationship between this girl and and indy because they're at each other's throats all the time and when he f thinks that he finally has some alone time with the mom it, it, all of a sudden the daughter comes in and she's like we gotta find dad and then indy's like ah oh, damn it that's right you're <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah you're attached <laughs> forgot about that <laughs> oh man <laughs> oh good heavens but but you know i mean Indy has been around, Indiana Jones has been around my whole life, you know, I, my, my parents not too long ago found uh, uh, my baby book and they said that after I was born, the, the first movie that they saw in the theater was Raiders of the Lost Ark, so either it was still in the theater or they uh, put it back in the theater, yeah, there were 
quite a few of those movies that they stayed in the theater for a couple years. So uh, back in the day and uh, <laughs> back in my day. <laughs> so, but yeah, Indiana Jones has been around forever. He's, I mean, <laughs> and but that last movie, I don't know. I they should have gone with Fate of Atlantis. They really should have. And um, I mean, it, it didn't. Ha I don't remember even seeing Sala. I don't remember seeing Sala. And of course, the gentleman who played uh, uh, Marcus uh, Brody is gone. And uh, I, I did appreciate that they paid tribute to uh, him and everything. But I mean, still, they don't really need to make a fifth one. They, they just, they don't. And they could put out more video games. <laughs> <laughs> they could do that. That be good. they could make a cartoon series. They really could. <laughs> I, I mean, for for heaven's sake! I mean, Harrison Ford is like eighty, and <laughs> yeah, this is when he should be doing like the flashbacks, <laughs> more flashbacks. <laughs> <laughs> oh good heavens yeah they could do more uh young indiana jones i guess well not really they pretty much covered it didn't they of course they didn't do the 1920s they could do the 1920s well that'd be fun see indy in the 1920s that was one thing uh in the books they they uh had a moment of where i guess he started a bar fight or something yeah, he he uh, was playing his saxophone and walked by and walked by one of the clubs and ended up in a bar fight. And <laughs> it's like, oh, Indy, oh, good heavens, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Everything, everything's wrong with this boy. <laughs> and that's why we love him. <laughs> he's destroying artifacts right and left. And he's just, no, oh, good heavens. Yeah, we love him, love him to death. And, uh, but anyway, um, I think I'm gonna stop it here. Yeah, uh, Young Indiana Jones Chronicles is on Amazon. I will of course double check on that for you, uh, for those that haven't seen it. And I really hope that the old indie is on there, George Hall, because like I said, on my DVDs, that's the only downside to my DVDs because I remember watching it as a kid and it, they always started with the old man opening up every, but yeah, I will double check on that. And um, yeah, 